Shortly after I graduated as a doctor, uh, I was working in a rural hospital. And one night, we heard the, the bells of a bullock cart approaching the hospital. And so the senior among us told us that, look, if a bullock cart comes so late at night, it must be somebody who is very sick. So we all, all of us got out, we went to meet. But we were very sad to find that the person had died during the journey. He had begun the journey alive, but by the time he reached the hospital, he had died. He had had a severe diarrheal illness, so he probably died from dehydration a highly treatable condition. So that day I learned about how important access to health care is. And it left a mark in me that to make sure that health care is always made easily accessible to whoever needs it rather than just to the person who can pay for it. Another death that we experienced, that was about another two months later, was my first day as a surgical house officer. A young adult had been operated for a very extensive intestinal condition. But the surgery was complicated. He had developed complications from surgery and he had become quite sick. And in those days when a person is very sick, uh, of course one is you, you put the patient on a ventilator, but there were no monitors those days. So the monitor is actually a doctor, a doctor who sits by the patient continuously for about six hours, six to eight hours at a stretch, and every 15 to 30 minutes, checking all the vital signs personally, because there are no monitors. And we knew, and as the houseman, we all had to do this. I had sat with him on one of my rosters, and then the time came around again for me to sat with him. And during that time, I could see and I had to record hour by hour his gradually deteriorating uh, parameters and to tell the parents that look we are losing the child and during my that shift that boy died. So this probably was a very close encounter with death in a different way. Uh, not being able to help and also knowing that it is coming. So in some ways, maybe that's where I learned how important it is to prepare the for the inevitable and how preparing them beforehand helps them in some way to deal with the with the grief. And each time we do it we become more sensitized, we become better. It's painful and definitely for for few hours, sometimes for the whole day, you think about all the things that you think maybe I could have done this, I could have done that. You, you go through this many times and finally you will you will, you will end your grieving when you conclude that yes, that which needed to be done was done. Nobody needs to be blamed and everything is all right. And then you move on, you're ready to take on the next patient. And that teaches us also that relatives also have to go through this phase. 
And sometimes, if this is before death, we have to give them time to slowly move through this phase. Because they are going to lose somebody permanently. For us, it's still a patient, though we know this is somebody's son, somebody's brother. So we feel bad at that time. And when you empathize, when you feel the sadness and grief of these parents, then you know that you also have a duty to learn how to do these things better. Uh, and that's why, for all of us, continual professional development is so important. And for me, continual spiritual development is also important because uh, my spirituality is also a very integral part of my, my care, my life. Everything I do is, in a way, influenced by my spirituality. So, constantly learning and telling myself that every time I need to be better in a way ensures that the next time I've got to do it, I'll do it with a little bit more finesse and maybe to a greater degree of satisfaction for either the patient or the relative.